Don't ever disrespect me. Ever, 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 ever disrespect. Ever, ever, ever disrespect. Ever, ever, ever disrespect me, pussy. Yo, welcome to episode 15 of season two, Outside with Gorilla Nems. You'll notice our background has changed a little bit since the last episode. Normally we're, we're outside in the elements, exposing ourselves to everything from dope fiends to homeless people to old ladies with strollers, people driving by screaming, fuck your life. Today we wanted to take a break from all that. Today, today we want to celebrate success. We want to appreciate the fruits of our labor because if you've been following us and if you've been following Gorilla Nems, you know it's been a long journey. We want to enjoy the saltwater pool, the waterfall, the palatial estate Facts. that we're in right now. <laughs> Talk your shit. Talk your shit. Talk your shit. Because we got a very, very, very special guest for you tonight. Uh, th today. This man is a living legend, an icon. He represents everything that is great about this thing that we call hip hop. He's a battle tested, well respected, often feared MC. The mayor, the pride, the people's champ, the mayor of Coney Island. The women names, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's what's up. Let's go. Yeah, man. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> All right, y'all, you'll notice this episode is a little bit different. Today, I'm your host, Busy. We got a very special guest. We're at the Palatial State, the Gorilla Villa. Over here, tucked like away that. in the birds. Like the Gorilla, the Gorilla, Gorilla Villa. The Gorilla Villa. I like that, too. Good one. Gorilla Nems. To his cut. right, <laughs> you'll see the most incredible hey, yeah. Paz Quah. Oh, Paz FYL. Oh, your favorite comedian's favorite comedian. Already. Let's give it up, Paz, y'all. Yeah, that's what it is, man. What? He said the cry of the bunch. <laughs> Tell the cry of the bunch. Me this morning. This morning. Early, First, let me introduce you know Six, talk. man. This is where you always, you always right, try right, to derail us. Just go chill out. Are you getting shot, bro? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, Six. Yo, the most cook. interesting man in the world. Stuff. Ray, get ready to cue up these clips. <laughs> My man does cryogenics. I, I started doing like cryotherapy one time. <laughs> My man owns two tech companies. Writing a book, I invested in a tech company. That... <laughs> Multiple clothing lines. An art gallery. The most interesting man in the world. Six to dawn, y'all. Clap it up. Damn, no, up, come man. on, yeah. dude. Yeah. Even she clapped in the back. <laughs> Damn. Niggas can't clap. Now this morning on the... <laughs> I was in the gym, bro. My arms don't even clap no more, bro. <laughs> like this, look. Come on. Got T Rex arms. Alligator arms. Let me get that My shit. Don't even touch no Let me get more, the bro. check. Seem like they don't want no smoke or no beef about this drip here. They don't want nothing about this drip. This drip is mine. So y'all stop believing in these rappers and that little songs and ad libs and shit you let the hit dude cook like it's only one drip call. Oh, this shit trip. I bet I got I'll go first. I got a Stone Island uh tea, some Stone Island swimming trunks, some Yeezy foam runners, and just a plain black hat. With the uh, wristband from the pool, the beach. Um, cause that's where I'm coming from. Only where those go to beaches where you need you wristbands. Just keep the wristband on. Coney Island, Island beach. You got a pay to go to the beach where you go? This be this specific beach. Out, where yeah. is that? It's, it's beach in bugs. Asbury Park. It's beach I'm bugs. too bougie for the beach now, bro. I got a salt water pool in my backyard. <laughs> all right, all right. Tell me the drip. So my drip, you know, check, man. fuck your life brand makes the cipher complete. You know that? That's always. Got the Versace robe with Nems on the back. That's like an extra 100, 200 just to write your name on the back. Versace did that. It wasn't like added out. Oh, that's factory. Factory three. Yeah, that's factory shit. Yeah, yeah. You got the essentials, you know, comfortable in every weather. You got some Ethica. Shout to Ethica. Send me some more drawers, you heard? And we got the fuck your life chancletas, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we got the, the jewelry, you know what I'm saying? I wear every single chain even when I'm in the house. Uh, I like that. Send a check with those drawers, Ethica, please. Yeah, facts. Yeah. Nah, I'm a large. Send me some drawers, too. Do you throw any underwear? <laughs> My turn, right? <laughs> yes, your turn. I got the Herman Preston fit. 
socks. Yo, Heron, hey, yo, after, this, yo, after, this, after this season, I'm not wearing this shit no more. If you don't send my man a care package, man, he ain't wearing your shit no more. <laughs> and I got the uh, <laughs> he threw it away. The reimagined threes, fire, and the FYL hat. So you kind of don't match good. for this one. Huh? No, what? It doesn't match. Yeah. It's all right. It matches. The rosary matches yeah, the rosary. Matches. You're blessed. My nigga's Fast, blessed. I'm blessed. Yeah. Yeah. Six. FYL cat. 1612 Mermaid Ave. Go cop that. Don't be Fast. foolish. Yeezy kicks, basketball kicks. I think he I think he bit a little bit off of what? 16s or something like that? A little bit, some inspo, some It's A little inspo silhouette of the sure. 16s, but I fuck with Yeezy and I fuck with the silhouette. Um, Daniel Patrick, Adidas, and uh, American Apparel, Blank T. Oh, I can't <laughs> see that, man. Like, they outside. You're looking brolic, I ain't gonna lie. Man titties out. <laughs> nah, I respect Stomach that. Stomach out. It's giving success. <laughs> this, might, this might be my look for the rest of the summer. You, nah, I fuck with that. When I seen that, I was like, that's oh, iconic. Man, he's looking right at your belly button. You see that shit? Yeah, it's, it's hypnotizing, <laughs> said, I honestly. I fuck with that. This belly button used to stash bundles. Right? How many? How many bundles? <laughs> At one, a finger one. full, a finger Three full. Bundles. That's, <laughs> that's a lot of fucking bundles. We're gonna bro. get into that part of his of his uh, life. I just wanted to know how many because we're gonna yeah, get into facts. that part. But this right, morning, yeah, I told Paz on the brink of this incredible episode that you're about to witness. I said, Yo, Paz, you gotta bring the jokes or you gotta bring the tears. Yeah, but what time was this text? I've been locked in all day. Yo, it was I've like been five thirty in the morning. Yeah, probably. Bro. Yeah, that's how. But what you I'm know, on. I go jogging, so he's like, Ah, right, let me hit him. Yeah. Ding. No, that's not why. I just. Uh, just but why uh, do you wake up at five thirty in the morning? I understand why he does because he got a bad, a bad heart, a bad ticker. <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? I have to do with me. Sometimes up early, if I, you can't sleep. Your alarm clock, so. If I knock out early, if I call it an early night, I might wake up at four o'clock. I would just never wake up. up in my life at five thirty. I did that when I was doing sanitation. So. Never I've been again. doing that my whole. life. I just get up. Before we get into the sanitation part, I wanna, I wanna. You know, as y'all have probably heard in the last episode, Nemes has signed his, his deal with Paul Rosenberg to Goliath Records. Rise of the Silverback is... Clap it up for that, man. That ain't yeah. no, that's not no By light. the time this drops, that's, that's, Rise that's of the motion. Silverback that's will already motion. be out, I'm sure. And it's a cool title and the cover is great, but there's like a, a much deeper meaning behind that, right? At the Rise of the Silverback, we're talking about like the literal come up of an MC that literally came from the bottom, like it's documented. You came up in the battle scene, that's not a scene that's known for being lucrative. Yeah, yeah facts. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially back then, maybe now you see the URL dudes like, oh, I could yeah, get, they make a little you know, yeah, they, they could get some yeah, red, especially then, at a high it? level, you can definitely sustain a good life in battle rap in, in today's like setup. But when you were doing it, there was no money in it. You were just yeah. doing it for the love, you know what I'm saying? So like the, the project Rise of the Silverback is really talking about the literal rise, like your literal come up and how your career has come, you know, not to a head, but to a, a new peak in your, in, your, in your life. You know what I'm saying? And elevated, I think that elevated. what I think is really important pe for people to know, especially people that discovered you later, this has been a journey for you. You know what That's I'm saying? Like this has been a long journey. So I, if anything, I would really like to today have you take us through that journey from like the very beginning. Your, your family has been there since the 1950s. What, what was your family like or like your family's like legacy in Coney Island to be in that one hood for so long? Like, Well, that's why I take, I take pride in Coney Island and being from Coney Island because my family, my grandmother, I'm Puerto Rican Irish. So on my Puerto Rican side, my grandmother had 14 children. You know what I'm saying? I guess birth control and was no, it was the was pulling, TV, pulling, it pulling was none It was none of that back then. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, facts. And I think there was like eight, eight boys or nine boys and and five girls or something like that, like around that. This is your your, your grandmother, you said. My grandmother. So my your mom mother. and her siblings were my okay. mother's mother and all. And I guess since my mother was born, my mother first they was in LES in the beginning, and then they went to Coney Island like. 1950s. My mom was born in the 50s, um, and they just was running wild in Coney Island, like, and never left. So through the 60s, they terrorized it. The 70s, then the 80s. My oldest uncle Ange was like, ran Coney Island, like, with the drugs, and it was just street, you know. So when I when I was born and grew up in Coney Island, it was like, I was like royalty, like Coney Island. Everybody like, if, with my whole family. 
We but amongst know. the hooligan, like amongst yeah, the yeah, canonicals of the... Amongst, of the, amongst yeah. the bottom, you know? Like the street. The, the street, street, yeah. The yeah, street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We was already known and, you know what I'm saying? So it was, um, it was like a no-brainer to represent Coney Island. And then during my high school years, we moved out. We moved to Staten Island. My mother bought a house and I went to high school in Staten Island. And then she relapsed, started using drugs and we moved back to Coney Island. And at this point, I was just in a three bedroom apartment. Me and my mom's was in one bedroom. Word. Me and my mom's and a cat. And they precious. <laughs> Word, I never even knew you had pets ever. Uh, she called cat aids. Word? That's, that's a, a thing. thing. Yeah, yeah, facts. Catch Why do you also know that's a thing? Cats catch I aids. I asked him. I wasn't saying that's a thing. Like, facts. I know. I asked him, that's a thing? Like, yeah, how does a cat get aids? I don't know. From fucking, probably, I would guess. Nah. I don't even Doing know. Doing drugs? They nah. sneaky bitches anyway, right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> The cat got AIDS, though. What's the like, Yo, got cat That's AIDS. crazy. How you found that out? Because when I took it, you would see like little um, <laughs> blood on the thing, on the wall. I'd be like, Yo, what the fuck is this? And now one day I noticed she was sneezing and she would sneeze up blood. And when I took it to the vet, it was like, Yo, she got cat AIDS. <laughs> I was like, Yo, how do you get cat AIDS? It was like, I don't know. Like, it's like the equivalent of AIDS. Yeah, you know, I don't know cat. if they catch the cat. The Makes same sense. Way. The yeah. name, the name, I kind of got that from yeah. the name. Yeah. Died? Yeah, hat. Damn, rest in mm. peace, precious. Facts. Best you were a good cat. You used to talk to me when I was high. Nah. Facts. Word sure. on the streets is that when you used to smoke bud, you never rolled it, but you ain't want to share with nobody. That's a fact. <laughs> That's so real scumbag shit. Yeah, yeah no, nah, nah, I wasn't rollers? a scumbag. I wasn't a scumbag. I would buy five nicks for 20. Okay. And give somebody that ain't have no weed, be like, yo. Roll all the rest. Roll four. me four. Right. <laughs> and four I'm going to roll, and you can have the other one. You yo. know what I'm saying? That is a perfect. With the sticks and seeds. <laughs> that's a perfect segue to my next question, right? Because you're welcome. That's great business, right? Like that. You what you Facts. just described of like, yo, I'm gonna buy for this price. I'm gonna offload the labor to this person. I'm gonna still Facts. ultimately get what I paid for and like save a bunch of time. That's like a very business-minded sensibility, right? And Absolutely. Seeing where you are now, are there any things that you learned in in your past life, which we, we could talk about more, but like. Are there things that you learned there that you're like, yo, this shit is actually mad valuable and like I could apply this that you apply to your business today? Um, well, when I did come back to Coney Island from Staten Island at that time, I brought back from Staten Island to Coney Island ecstasy, ecstasy pills. Nobody in Coney Island really was selling them at the time. But they were, it was big out here. Everybody was doing that shit. But in the hood, nobody was really fucking with that. So when I brought it back, so you brought it back to Coney from Staten Island? Yeah, saying. yeah, and I had the plug out here in Staten Island. I had the plug, so it was just like I brought it back, and then I would just ride my bike up and down the Ave all day and be like, yo, I got X, I got E pills. You used to be rolling doing that? Hell yeah. I used to wake up, <laughs> take one. On the wake up? On the wake up. Damn. On the wake up. That's, That's intense. That's crazy. I never ride ecstasy, my bike, I can't imagine ride doing... my bike all day ecstasy? up and down Coney Island. Up and down, stop by, talk with people. Yo, I got E here, take my beeper number. Nah, I don't fuck with Well, if you do, here. And I was just, it just was turning mad people out. What was the motivation behind it? Were you like making money? I just or was needed it money. Where? I needed money. I was making mad money. But also was feeding my habit. Sure. By the end of every day, I was probably taking like two, three E pills a day. Damn. For like a six month period. That's insane. And what was like the going rate around at that time? Was it like $20 a pill? Joints a pill? And I would get them for like six dollars a pill. Yo, you know what's crazy about that? You say like you did a lot of drugs, three pills a day, shit like that. Mm -hmm. But you sharp as a tack. Like, do you feel like there's anything that's like, like, damn, maybe my memory's fucked up. What is that? My They're memory like, is gone. My yeah. memory. I meet people that they tell me stories that we did together that I don't even remember. Remember, I don't remember really nobody I battled in Fight Club. People tell me shit about, yo, remember we did this? I'll be like, even girlfriends in the past was like, yo, remember we did this on this day? And I'll be like, I ain't no, even know. Do you remember about. battling actual fact on two third on bro day? Yeah, I smoked them. Facts. Smoked. That was like your, 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 your hood. You were there? Or his video? Man, smoked. No, were you there, I'm saying? Nah, I heard oh. about it. Oh, Cause what? you know, it's a Spanish rapper did that and I fucked with his uncles, Cootie and them. And Ricky was my man. Yeah, cause That's when I cousin. came back from Coney Island, I was already rapping. But my first rap I wrote was a battle rap. So when, when 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 I came back to Coney Island, it was 
one kid that was battling everybody named Actual Fat. And everybody thought he was nice. I thought he was trash. I never thought he was nice. Shout out actual everybody... fact, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah. Actual fact from 2000. Good people. You know what I'm saying? Cool kid. He, he, he got some shit. But when you're that age, you're just like. That was your mindset nah, at the time. Yeah, you were just like, he can't fuck with me. There's no way he could fuck with me. Word, word, word. And I was offended that people thought he actually could. So, you know, I, I finished him a couple times. Right. This is high school time or this is? This is right after, I, probably, I'm like 18, 19. Okay, before right, Fight yeah, Club, Fight Club. Bro Day was like a big, Yeah, this is. that was like in the Terror Dome on 23rd Street in Coney Island. That was a huge event. Mm -hmm. And one was there one time, like that's. Word. And he did, you know, rappers would like get their outfits together and go there to like, it was like a thing, yeah. like we're stepping yeah, out. Is that, like, is that the point battle. where you had a like a reputation of being a rapper in the hood? Like, did you have a reputation of being no, to be a honest, street nigga in the hood, that, but did you have a reputation of being time, a rapper? During that same time, when I was selling the ecstasy, it was like, yo, I really was outside from sun up to sun to sun up again. You know what I'm saying? And this is before Instagram, MySpace, any of that. So how you got your name up is. You went around and fucking battled well, everybody. Whoever well, rap, you just if went you, at him. Oh, there's somebody on 25th Street that raps? We going over there. coming over there. Yeah, facts. facts. You know what I'm saying? Oh, there's like somebody. Like you had yeah, to like ride your bike over yeah. to like Yo, somebody. there's somebody over there? Facts. Right, I'm coming over there. Tell them let's battle. Facts. And then, you know, I, 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 I killed everybody in the hood. You know what I'm saying? And then it gets to the point where, all right, now you go battle other neighborhoods. Then you battle in the city at events, other states, other... You know, and that's how you got your name up. You said your first rhyme was a battle rhyme. Do you feel like you were channeling that frustration from, from some of the, you know, the whack shit that you had to deal with coming up, that this was like an outlet for you? Like, why, where do you think you pull that, like, anger from? You know what I'm saying? How you can easily, like, go back to it every time and it's still, like, equally potent. You know what I'm saying? Well, now, as an adult, I look back at my life and there's always been anger there for my whole life. Like, my father died when I was four years old. You know what I'm saying? Word. And I don't re really remember dealing with that, you know what I'm saying, as a child. So I'm sure there's, there's childhood trauma there. But then right. also, when I was like 16, 17, we was living in the suburbs, nice house. Everything was good. And my mother, who had been clean my whole life, had went back to using drugs. And my whole security, everything I knew, was taken away from me and I was back at square one. And I remember when I look back at, see, I didn't notice it then, but when I look back, I remember when she sat me down and told me, like, yo, I relapsed and shit like that, we're going to leave the house. I remember going up to my room and hitting the wall with bat, with a bat and just breaking my whole room up. Word. Because that was felt, mad, that's felt, mad frustration. Felt helpless. Yeah. yeah, there was nothing yeah. I could do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nice. And then, um. And this is before, this is before, this is before you did drugs, is what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is before I did so drugs. So she, she told you this? Before you I even, I was already smoking weed. Yeah, but that's, that's Xanax, yeah, yeah, yeah. ecstasy, but not like the shit I later got into. You know yeah, what I'm saying? yeah, heavier shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, so there's always been an anger there. Um, but there's always been a hunger to be the nicest. Like so, after after we moved the Staten Island years, when I was out here, I got kicked out. I set up. I was talking to a girl, set a piece of oak tag on fire, like just flicking a lighter, the shit went up. And I got kicked out. I couldn't go to no New York public high school. Right? Why oh, they labeled you like a fire star? Yeah, like an arson. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I had to go. Like seven of Pennsylvania. Uh, yeah, I went to the Poconos to live with my Irish side grandparents. So when I would go to school out there, I didn't know not one person. Totally different culture out there. I didn't, nah, I was mad hood over there too. Oh, where? Yeah. But I didn't want to know nobody because I would just go to school there on the week and every Friday after school, I would take the bus back to New York and come home. Work. You know what I'm saying? And then Sunday, take the bus back up. So I didn't really want to make friends. I just was like, y'all, I'm here. You're Let like me make doing a bit out there. Yeah. Shit. Work, so work, work. after school, I would do my homework and then I would just write raps, but nobody knew I rapped at that time. I just was starting to rap because I had nothing better to do. But there was kids in the school that was rapping and battling each other that I knew, even though I didn't rap, I knew I could fucking finish them. <laughs> you just by the way, it wasn't even something you were doing. Just by the way they dress and the way they talk, I knew that if I wrote something, I would flame them. So I just would take their inventory the whole school year. And on the last day of school, I thought I wasn't going back to Pennsylvania. I thought that was it. I'm going back home. I was like, yeah, I rap. I already had 
rhymes for like the for two, every three, rapper. yeah, for every rapper that thought they was nice. <laughs> that right there built the confidence in me where I was just like, I I want to keep doing this. But that's that was the first rhyme I ever wrote was a battle rap. So it was just like, I liked the feeling of instant success, instant gratification, instant. Notification, like people knew, like now people are talking yeah, about. Yeah, notoriety, me. like off rip. Like. So I wound up going back to that school for like the first three months when the new year started. When you I walked back to the school, the first day I was like a star. You know what I'm saying? Was bugged out, like you from New York too. That's a, that's yeah. like a part of the aggression. The aggression is more like that's just how we talk, but people look at it like aggressive, but yeah, it ain't yeah. aggressive. Like liberals. Yeah, facts. <laughs> Good one. Now, nah, but you did there. One thing that I can say, as long as I've known you. And we're talking about like homelessness, like just tough childhood, closed doors, you know what I'm saying? Broken promises. The one thing that I've never, ever, ever known you to, to suffer from is self-doubt. I don't know, I've always been strong-minded. I've always been the type that when I put my mind to it, positive or negative, is gonna happen. On, on every part of my end, I'm gonna make it happen. Even negative, if I say, if I'm with a girl and I tell myself, I could just shut my feelings off like this. I don't know why I'm like that. I'm like a fucking- uh, Psychopath. Psychopath, yeah. 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 But like, like I could just, I could yeah. just, it's not, not, not total feelings, but you know, I could just, if once my mind goes to like, nah, I don't fuck with this chick no more. She already did me dirty or whatever the case, I could, just, I could shut everything off and just move on. I have like, like, like a lot of people I notice, a lot of my friends, girls, everything, is overthinkers. Yeah. I'm not. I'm an underthinker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah. That ass. I'm an underthinker to the point where I'm just like, I'm not going to give that shit no power, no more energy. I'm just going to say fuck it and leave it in God's hands. Word. What's the point of worrying about it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. For that. that's, that's, that's a great way to live yeah, life, man. In, God's hands, man. in a lot of ways, I admire the way that you live your life and how you can be an underthinker. But what I will give you credit for is like, you're actually, and people who don't know you and from the outside don't know, you're actually like a very reasonable person. He's very like open to suggestions and like, I bet you're right, fine. My first thought is always negative. Yeah. <laughs> Always. Once <laughs> you get past that, you and go to the positive. And, and anything, and anything. If you tell me something, my first thought is going to be negative. When I meet a girl, my first thought is always negative. When I meet a person, my first thought is like, yo, they're going to try to scheme on me. They're going to try to do something to me. That's crazy. Because I've been that person yeah, that's a fact. that does yeah. that to other people. Fact. So you can see. You know what I'm I've been, I've lived. You can lived. see when it's coming, right? You said on a record, hey, I robbed my I mean, own mother. I'm not doing what I do to you. That was crazy, though. What did you say? Uh -oh. Here's an actual lyric. He said, I robbed my own mother. Imagine what I do to you. It's and that's fact. true. Once you rob your own mother, it's, it's like everything else. It's food. Yeah, it's who, fair game. Who the fuck are you? Every, yeah. I mommy, so you don't put bro. it past yeah. anybody to, to, to get down like that. If I get that, if I have gotten that grimy in my life, I don't think the next man won't do that to me. Or the next female. Yeah. And I've been in situations with females where I'm smashing and they're on the phone with their fucking husband. Word. So like it's my trust, my trust is like you gotta earn that shit. I'm not a person that gives trust. You gotta earn that trust. Some people trust? give you the trust. Myself. That's it. That's it. You know what I'm saying? So I, I still it. think busy schemes on me. And I How, do they earn your... for like years. How do they earn your trust if you if you I, this, I can't you explain can't it. Wait. There's no it's way to unearnable. Yeah. How you earn my child? But know. what you can earn, what I say, what I will say well, you I can earn is actions, you might not be able to earn his trust. And I, I've been working with them for a long time, so I've learned this. You're never gonna be able to earn his trust, but you can earn his loyalty. That's a fact. Type of disclaimer because we know they're so, gonna so be in the far, comments. You're reasonable and caring. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, it's an true, man. Too, it's true. An asshole too. Nah, an asshole is definitely up there. But sometimes shit just be happening in my favor, bro. I don't know. I got some. <laughs> yo, you I blessed. Got, yo, it's my. Uh, I'm sure it's my blessed. mom's that prays for me every day, and 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 my mom's is heavy in the church, so her prayer warrior. Right. Yo, this shit that be happening to me. That I don't even be meaning for it to happen to me, but it be happening, and I be getting away with shit. Though I'm like, yo, I don't know how that happened. Somebody helping me. But you. something is out there helping me. The universe, God, whatever you choose to call it, yeah. is working in my favor, man. Because 
you dealt with all the bad karma like in the front end of your yeah. life almost yo, like all the dirt I, bag I, shit i think about that shit all the time man i'm like yo i'm so happy that i was homeless a wild drug addict and all of that in my younger years because i seen people that was good in the younger years and then they fuck up in their later years and it's they like to bounce is back. Over. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, wow. I spent like eight to ten years at the bottom, bottom. Like nobody, my man Pee Wee be telling me like, yo, Nems, you was on heroin for eight years. People don't come out of that. You know word, what I'm saying? Word, That's word, a tough word. demon, bro. You be powerful. Bro. Nah, but I always knew that even when I was doing it, bro, I said to myself, like, I was miserable. It was not fun. Like drug use and all of that. In the beginning was fun, but after years of doing it and just keep failing and when you know? I was just I knew from I knew from early, but I just couldn't put enough time in between. I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop. But I always said to myself, yo, once I'm able to put together a substantial amount of time, like, two, what, like a month, two weeks, three two weeks, weeks man, I'm amazing. never gonna touch this shit again. I just was never able to fucking do it. And then when I actually did it. I was like, bro, I'm never touching this shit again. And you always credit your moms because you're like, you did rehabs or whatever, whatever, but it was, it just had to be like your mom's prayers that like literally saved your life, you think? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Are you tired of rappers with bullshit merchandise? Over here in Coney Island, we got the right shit for you, Pop. Fuck your life. We got the highest quality to the highest standard. Made right here in Coney Island by children and drug addicts. And get the savings. We got 50% off for nothing. Buy one, get nothing free. Buy two, get nothing free. Buy three, get nothing free. Where else can you get that? Oh my God. Don't fucking spend your money. Don't save none for your kids. Fuck them little bastards. Everything I rock got the G on it with the will ahead. Hat, hoodie. Jack pants, socks, chain, ring, G on it, gorilla head. Come over to FYL, we're kicking the competition's ass. Woo! I'm gonna punch that dog right there. <laughs> that ass though. Your favorite rapper prints his merch on bullshit like this. We don't do that over here at FYL. FYL store grand opening. If you ain't here, I'm doing this to your little brother. Seeing him have conversations with people in the industry. He, he's like Mike Tyson is with boxing, he is with music. He knows Word. mad shit, yeah, who facts. signed with who, oh, this guy signed with, oh, yeah, I know him. I'm just like amazing to me, and he don't stop fucking working. I'm dead ass serious about that. Yo, when we just went to Miami, Pops was like, yo, I'm coming, right? He was like, yo, we're going to go in the water, the beach. I said, yo, I hope you know it. We're not gonna touch the beach <laughs> whatsoever. I hope you don't think like, we are here I'm bringing, playing games. I'm bringing my shorts. We're gonna go to the beach, yo. I need you to get a video of me in the water. I'm like, no, I we're, we're that. not. That's cat. We're not yeah, touching the beach crazy. whatsoever. <laughs> and that's wherever we go: L.A., Atlanta, fucking Miami, overseas. Like, yo, I'm not. I'm not there to have fun. I'm here to fucking further my dreams. Watch, which. which it's fun. It's fun to me. Yeah, yeah. Like I've warped it in my mind. Like since I quit, I don't smoke weed. I don't do drugs. I don't drink. Like, so going to a club is not fun for me, right? Going out for a regular night like normal people do is not fun for me. If I'm not making money, it's not fun for me. I've warped my brain somehow to only have fun if I'm getting paid. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That's, uh, that's dangerous. That's good, nah, though. Nah, that's good. That's good. It's just like also, um, I'm focused. Look, Locked between in. 35 and 50, or some people earlier, up to like 50, 50, up to like 50 years old, man. That's your main time to make the money you're gonna make to set yourself up. Who the fuck wants to? be working at 50, 55, 60, 60. You no, know, people do it, yeah. but the main goal is to work in your early years, so when you get to those extra years, you just enjoy it. Just lay the fuck back and right. enjoy the Chill by the pool and the road, road with hey, so many jewels on. That's what, that's what puts so us in the saltwater pool. Hold on, my man mom that, worked till she was that? just about to retire, got cancer, yeah, yeah, yeah. and she passed away, so. <laughs> is it still, is it still, like, have you accepted that you're here, or are you still like, yo, it's just bugged out? Nah, sometimes, like I have a, a board, not a board, but just like a, the shit, the race board on my refrigerator. Vision it's board. small. Vision board. Nah, it's not vision. It's just a small thing that says Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday to Sunday, and it has a little space at the bottom. So I write, you know, in the beginning of the week, I find out my schedule. I write what I gotta do. But at the bottom, I write three things every week. 
be nice because I tend, I tend to. You write that every week on your calendar so when you reset it? I have to tell myself it? to be nice, yes. And I reset it every week because. <laughs> Instead of just leaving it, you it. purposely no, rewrite no, no, it. No, it's no, some days, some, some weeks, I rearrange it. Be nice, stay safe, and you're living the dream. Word. That's you know what I'm saying? There's three things that I always want to walk out my door to remember is be nice to people because I could easily just be an asshole, like, and not in a funny way. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right, fact. Like, just be like, man, fuck you, or, or, or not, because, like I said, I was at the bottom, but I've been not at the bottom now longer than I was at the bottom. So sometimes I forget how it felt to be at the bottom. Yeah. So I have to keep it green, like, yo. It's like humbling. Not shit. everybody yeah. is where you at right now, and you wasn't where you was at 10 years ago. So be mindful of that. So I, that's the be nice part, to stay safe, it's like now I'm a target. You know right. what I'm saying? And and in all areas of life, whether it be people looking for opportunities, people looking for come ups, girls looking for you know, that's it's a just fact. it's just be safe. You know what I'm saying? Every know your surroundings, yeah, wherever fact. you at. That's a good one. And then it's remember you're living the dream. Fact. Like I'm living the dream. Like this is what I worked all this time for is now in the last couple months. Like I've been doing good but now it's like I got signed to a major label that's crazy so that's like validation like now I'm like I, I was telling I forgot I think I was telling no I was telling Mex I was like yo you know what's the best part of being signed shitting on on the underground I thought you was gonna say yo be nice I thought you was gonna say some like inspiration and shit nah man <laughs> fuck that <laughs> Do you feel like you got love from your peers early on? I feel like I didn't get, I feel like a lot of people didn't put me on songs because I would outdo them. I feel like a lot of people, but it was a big part of me too. Like, that's why I tell like upcoming artists, like, yo, be cool as much as you can with everybody. Work. Cause there's been a lot of times back when I was doing EO Dub, the end of the week shit or other shows where I'd be like, man, these dudes is corny. I ain't even talking to them. I'm not even, Giving them the time of day. I'm not, I'm like, fuck out of here. I'm Nims. Fuck your life. And then they came, they they grew up to be editors of magazines <laughs> or, <laughs> or A&Rs at labels or other shit. Security that, at the nah, club. That's how, yeah, that's how it could have helped me <laughs> if I would have just been cool with them. Even if I didn't really fuck with them like on some music. Just still been like, yo, what's up, man? Just... Yeah, more fine. humble. Yeah. You said something really important there, and I think I think it's it's <laughs> it's important that we call it out because it's um it's a it's a staple, it's a pillar in in the in the battle in the underground hip hop circuit, and, and and you came from that EO Dub. You know what I'm saying? That is a a global, you know, for, for those of y'all don't know, a global um, hip hop institution that really focuses on on um like the pure elements of hip hop. You know, that's that's how I could best classify it. What was that time like when you were like moving around at EO Dub? We was deep. That's when when Fuck Your Life, the Fuck Your Life is, was, we had like a seven man crew, but each man also had like 10 people that rolled with them. It was me, George Burns, Dayton, Jay Hong, Eternal, um, Scoop Scandal, Jay Rose, that was George Burns' sister. And, um, was Poison Pen down with y'all? Poison Pen was like an affiliate. He wasn't like with the main seven and Word. OTR. Um, and we was just, we tried for a minute to do, you know, like a group project. Um, but then I got locked up. And once I got locked up, dudes started beefing with each other. And, and Dayton went to like God Dayton school. Dayton started rapping for God. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, so I just persevered. You know, everybody else went their own ways, but I was still was like, you know, I, I'm the one that created the fucking life shit anyway. So I was like, <laughs> where, I'm where, running where? with it. Other people made different crews. I, I, you know, I got into fights with other people, you know what I'm saying? Hit people over the head with bottles, gave people <laughs> scars, you know what I'm saying? But that was in the past. Word. Shout out to EO Dub, man. A very, you know, pillar in, in, in hip hop. You had all of the success independent, and now you find yourself merging with a, a major. What's your experience with that? I've noticed with the labels, everything is mad slower. The, That's the, a fact. You know, I've no disrespect to labels, it's just a fact. Nah, it's just everything is slower. Like, if I was just independent, if I want to drop a song tomorrow, I could drop it tomorrow. 
with the label. It's like, all right, who produced it? Who you got featured on it? They got to sign this contract. Yo, do this. You got a video. You got this, this. You got this. You got clearance. What's the sample? That? It's like, <laughs> it's bro. Yeah, that's bro. crazy. It's frustrating. But I did let my foot off the gas for like the first week when I got signed. And then when I seen like, nah, there's no point to it. Like, I'm still going to. I still have my to shit. Keep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now right. it's just an extra added team. Because look, every year, besides when we jump in the water and the polar bears, right? I set a new overall goal. For the year? For the year. So in 2016 is when, he, when I first really started it. Where I was like, all right, this year, I'm not putting out no music of my own. Like I do features, I do freestyles on Instagram, but this year I'm focusing on making the fuck your life brand, clothing. You know what I'm saying? And I just went hard with that. Every My mind switched off of making rhymes and switched on to making designs. 2016, so boom. That's when I started meeting up with people out the back of the trunk, doing that, 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 that. With the red car? Yeah, no, with the white car first, then the, then the red, and then the truck. And then um, after that, it was like, all right, Let's focus back on the music, 2018. That was Gorilla Monsoon, which a lot of people think is my best project. Fire. Love that project. Fire. Fire. That's Jassoon's joint, right? Produced by Jassoon? Yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. Jassoon produced. Then, uh, 2020, like right when the pandemic was, I was like, yo, I gotta start showing more of my personality. You know what I'm saying? And a year later, 2021, the side talk shit happened and everything bigged up, bang. And then um, I just focused back on the music. Now everything took full effect. You know what I'm saying? Now we got the store, the website is lit, um, the, the music, the content, and now it's back to circle back on the music. But yeah. also in 2021, right? It's funny. That's why I was saying like, that's why shit just be happening for me. Cause in 2021, I just like, when it started, I was like, all right, I got everything, but I'm doing everything dolo. I'm at the peak where I could do everything dolo. Now I need to form a team. And then the bing bong shit happened and the team just aligned itself. Like busy, Mex <coughs> became my manager. Mex, I was like, yo, man, offers are coming in. They want me to go to fucking Dallas. They want me to go San Antonio. Like bing bong is going viral right I now. I can't damn. be telling these people my price. I can't be telling, I can't be haggling with these people, yeah. nothing. So Mex, you're gonna do that. Mech started getting overwhelmed. I was like, yo, Busy, you start doing this. And then Vinny came and, then, and, 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 and the, team the team just aligned itself. Right. So when you're moving in the right team, way, bro. when you're moving in the right way, should have happened for you. You know what I'm saying? If you already put in the work. I've been putting in this work for fucking a minute now. You know what I'm saying? Pretty now, you know what's funny like with Paul Rosenberg is that he started following me. And... My thing is like two things with Instagram and social media. One is every follower you got should equal a dollar in your pocket. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're doing social media right, every do every follower you got should equal a dollar in your pocket. It's a good formula. Because if you're doing it right, then people buy into what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, like so my mind state is like, yo. They might not fuck with me, but once I get them to click the follow button, they're going to fuck with me. Facts. Because they're going to see I'm really out here putting in work. I'm really, my music is actually Talk pretty good. Shit. You know what I'm saying? Nah, because he's genuine my, with, with the comedy, everything. Yeah. And he touched on everything. Stages, movies. It, it, it's fire. Yeah. There's, no, watch there's no future in fronting. Yeah, facts. if you wanna if you wanna front for the gram, it's gonna come back and bite you in your ass. Hundred percent. You know what I'm fact. saying? So I'd rather just be like, yo, this is who I am. Yeah. I was a fucking drug addict. I was homeless. I did every, I did all the wrong things, and I put that out there. And you chilling? But now, now yeah. I bought my mom's a house. I got a house. I got mad shit popping. That shit don't define who I was. It just made yeah, me who I was. Yeah, your past don't define you, you know man. What I'm saying? Right, clap back. it up for that real quick, Clap man. it up for that. Because it's a true shit, statement. That's bro. a true statement, bro. I respect that. And then, like I was saying, so Paul followed me. So I was like, got him. You know what once I'm saying? He, yeah, once he's in the scope. I was like, he's going he's gonna to come around. 
Um, I DM'd him a couple years ago, before the bing bong shit happened. I was like, yo, what's up? You wanna, like, I want you to manage me, what's up? He was like, nah. Ready to just cut me and mix out the equation off with nah, all that loyalty wasn't, stuff. They I wasn't, wasn't even in the they picture. They wasn't in the picture. It wasn't even I remember you having that like, conversation. One thing about yeah. me and Busy, me and Busy is that Busy been like managing me since like 2012, 2011, like around there. <laughs> Busy thinks he's an artist. So every couple years, I would, we would just be like, yo, let's just stay friends. You go your way, I go mine. And in that time, in the process, when he went his, I went mine. I started dropping Gorilla Monsoon. He started working for Cinematic. So I hit Rosenberg like, y'all want you? He was like, man, I'm done with managing, bro. That shit is too much of a headache, too much of my time. I was like, damn. He already knew then, I bet you. Facts, he just wanted know. to see you putting a little more work. I mean, he's seen it. If he followed they you doing. from back then, they he's sitting there watching. Let me see if he's really putting in more. Because now he's following you, so he can see every movement. Yeah, yeah. And that's when he was like, this, he on his grizzly. Work. This is a celebration, you know what I'm saying? So of course we're gonna give our, give our man his flowers and, and, and celebrate him because we're incredibly proud man, of him. He's a real dude. You know what I'm saying? He, he'll he, take the he, picture. That's he important. He'll He's what? a star. He'll take the picture for you. Like your pause, go right there. Nah, 100 percent. Yeah, 100 percent. Like and other stars won't do that. He's real like that. Like that's I'll take a fact. The so I just want to put that out there before you, there's a bunch of shit talking in the comments. Like so what? You know what I'm saying? Like our man, man got fact. signed and we're happy for man. him. You know what I'm saying? Let's clap it up one time. Yeah, fact. Rise of the Silverback. That was, a, that was a whack clack. Clap it up again. Let's have it up one time. Like Get that. this right in the edit, Ray. Yeah, thank you. Yo, you find yourself in uh, doing business with a lot of your friends, which is fire. That's kind of like what he's talking about right now. That's there's like a there's like a stigma behind that, like yeah. business and friendships. What's your take on that? How, what's your experience with it? With that, it's like people use the friend the term friend too loosely. Right. You got to know who's around you. There's some people that are friends, some people that are acquaintances. And some people that's just there alone for the ride and get what they could get out of it. Yeah. yeah. My thing is, I treat all of y'all the same, but I know who the fuck is who. <laughs> yeah. And I also know that if you around me and you patient, your turn is gonna come. Fact. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like Paz. I knew he was the comedian. I knew when the podcast was coming, called Paz. Yep. There's, there's other, Hubert, I knew Hubert, live action, got the fucking personality out of take him he's to the star. Yeah, he's out here. You know what I'm saying? We put mm. him on the podcast. You know what I'm saying? My other man is into the weed game. I don't smoke, I don't do weed, but everybody always gives me weed, wants me involved with their weed, so I bring them along. Here, make connections. Right. Get your weed brand up. You know what I'm saying? There's... The problem I see with a lot of people when they cruise is that as soon as they, the man's, they man's blow, they think Yo, they're going to be here. rich automatically. Yeah, here, yes. Nah. They think it's hand down. Play your position. Wait your turn. I'm a grown ass man. I'm not giving no other man money. Fact. I'm not handing nobody no handouts. But what I will give another man, somebody that stood firm by me, somebody that I, I feel like Solid. when I'm not there and somebody talks shit about me, they're going to stick up for me. I'll give them all the opportunity in the world. That's the realest thing a man could do for another man is give him an opportunity. That's a fact. Because we all grown men. I'm not giving no man, nobody, no fucking handouts, bro. And that's the same way want. I got to work for mine, you got to work for yours, motherfucker. That's what, that's what people want. <laughs> yeah. They just want free lunch. Nah, I'll like leave that. it safe for Paz. When Nims, when, when Nims first got the, the opportunity for the podcast, and he was like, oh, I want to have, we were talking about like co-hosts or whatever, and he's like, yeah, I want to have Paz on it. I'm having Paz on the show 100%. Yeah. He's on the show. Can I tell you a true story? I was like, all right. Real quick. I'm in the hospital. After my second heart surgery, Nims came to see me. Everybody knows that he's seen it. So now he's leaving. I'm like, you coming back? He's like, yeah. I'm like, you ain't coming back. He starts laughing. On his way out the room, he looks back and says, get better, we got work to do. Mm. And that shit made me like, yeah, fast. Man. I started walking and all that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got footage of that too, man. Right? Yeah, facts, they got footage. You got footage of that, right, Ray? That's a yeah. true story. My man Junkyard Juju from the Beat Nuts said, yo, if you listen to everything they say about you that's good, and you gotta listen to everything they say about you that's bad. That's, that's gangster. Fire. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. fire. And, and that stuck. I don't know why that stuck in my head, but that stuck in my head. And I, 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 
when I listen, when I when I meet up with, see a lot of younger artists when they meet up with older rappers, they look at them like they washed or they're not doing nothing. When I meet them, I take game from them. Yeah. Even when I did the album with L. Bill, I would, I was just also creating a friendship with him. I would go to his house. We'd be supposed to record. I would just sit with him for five, six hours in his house, listening to him tell me stories. Yeah. Bug out, yeah. Because he was signed and he he went through the game and did all of that. So I I take these jewels from my predecessors, just the 100%. way I give game to younger artists. They give game to me too, and I I listen. Yeah. Um, but that was that was one of them. I thought that shit was dope. Jim Jones. Also, when I first met him, fine, I thought man. it was dope that um, he just said, he just came up to me and was like, yo, I see you. He was like, um, get all the fucking money you could out of these motherfuckers. Yeah. Like, don't, don't settle. Like, it ain't going to be like this forever. You know what I'm saying? Which is exactly what I told all the guys from the Side Talk videos. Not Jack and Trent, not Side Talk. I was already getting booked. People already knew me. But for them, I was like, yo, make sure... Everything people ask you for, you're getting paid from it because this is not going to last forever. Yeah, it's true. You know what I'm saying? So get it now while you can. Well, and you didn't even try to sign them or nothing. You were just trying to give them game nah, like, yo. Nah. Well, to be what? honest, that was supposed to be me. But I, I was like, shy. I'm serious. He called me. I was at work. He said, I got the side tour guys come and pull up. Fact, oh, I'm you mean not, you got the call to, to be yeah, there when they take I'm, I'm his, I'm his, I'm his guy. I'm the comedian. Like whatever. You're like in the same lunatics. You have the mask. <laughs> I have the mask. Yeah, whatever. Your little ingenious. Nah, that's humor. my. That's Murph Lee. That's <laughs> Murph, Lee. <laughs> Murph Lee was the good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Murph Lee was good. Fact. So Murph Lee was mask, also like soft. Knows. But I didn't want to do that. Like I'm not like. Uh, like I wasn't going to do that, so I was just like, What nah. is your style if you have to describe it? If it's not like, uh, like what would it be? Back. I'm telling you. That's more my style. It's not really like, uh, whatever they doing, you know what I mean? Why are you like winking what, at him? Comedy though, bro, what, comedy style? His comedy style? Wait, that's uncomfortable. His why you, comedy why you style? you looking at me like I didn't that? wink at you. Yeah, but you like leaning like like my, my dog nigga, looks I like I didn't wink, I didn't wink at you. Show me the footage where I winked at you. Shout out to our sponsors one time, Monster Energy. Yo, one thing I notice about when people notice me in the street is everybody's my biggest fan. I think that's like a nervous twitch that yeah, people do. Yeah, yeah. It's just a default response. Yo, but yeah. nah, the demographic is there's crazy. No, oh, young. There's no rapper that could touch my demographic. Like My demographic is like little kids to old people in the school bus to mad old people <laughs> Facts. you know what i'm saying and every race that that's what that viral shit did that that just made my demographic like america's sweetheart every, yeah facts yeah. big time yeah, that's but with dope. the block is like that's the block even i was meeting people with the merch there on 16th and mermaid for years you know what i'm saying saturday nights we just dropped new shit come meet me over there bang 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 and then the cell phone store opened. I was like, this ain't gonna last long. Then another cell phone store how opened. Long you, my bad. How long were you doing hand to hands for? Because I remember you had two um, cars during 2016. that period. So 2016 to. I had a white Honda Accord. Then I got the red Honda Accord Sport. And then the money started bigging up. And I was Make like, sure you yo. Call, you called out as a sport. You were like, just so you know. Sport. It was yeah, sport. <laughs> yeah. It went from, cool. it went from four cylinder to V6. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Pack it up for V6. Pack it up for seven grand. For the sport. That's seven grand. grand. But then I, beat it. I had, yo, it's all about vision, man. Even, even with the store, I was like, yo, when this, when this cell phone store closes, I'm building the FYL store. But even when I had the Honda Accord, I was like, yo, when this lease is up, I'm buying a fucking pickup truck and I'm gonna make this is before the store. I'm gonna make the back my store. I'm gonna like build, a I'm gonna make right. a TV pop out of it. I'm gonna have drawers, yep. a hat display. I visioned all of that before I made it happen because I was like, everywhere I go, people are asking me for merch. So, and you why would not? post, like, yo, I'm going to the Bronx today. Like, if you yeah, had yeah. one delivery in the Bronx, you would make a post. Yeah, like, yo, I'm be going in the to the Bronx. Bronx today, but people would hit me in the Bronx and be like, yo, how much for a shirt? I'd be like, you know, fifty dollars, seventy-five, whatever it was. They'd be like, "Yo, I'm in the Bronx. Could you deliver?" I'd be like, "Yo, listen. If you take five shirts, I'll deliver. If Word. not, you gotta meet me in Coney Island because I'm not driving in the Bronx." Like for $50. how you did the five uh, the nickel Knicks. bags for for, yeah. for twenty dollars. Yeah, now facts. you just applied the same shit 100%. to the shirts. Word. Word. And, that's, um, that's genius. But also, it was also like, I look back and I'm like, or well, people ask me, "Yo, you wasn't worried going?" Because I, go, I travel dolo wherever I go. 
Because I'm confident, not that I'm tough, but just, I'm a New Yorker. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm good in all the boroughs. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been in all the boroughs at my lowest. I maneuver, and I'm just, I'm me. Yeah, whatever that, that whatever, that, whatever you take that as, I'm me. I'm not really worried about it. But they be like, yo, you was going other places. You know? Wherever I went when I was driving around, I had the blicky with me. Everywhere. And so I wasn't worried about that. I was like, I Allegedly. doubt. I doubt now the statute of limitations is up. <laughs> I was like, no matter where I go, I doubt it's going to be any issues. But if there is, I'm good. Yo, so what's the singing. next vision, though? Like, you know how you got yeah, the store, what, what you, got you got that? What's up, what's, 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 what's the next is thing? The music. What's the next thing? The next thing is the music. The music is really like, this rise of the silverback is just like the tip of the fucking iceberg, bro. This like... This is just like the beginning. I got this album, this album, been working on for like two years with Scram Jones. We was just, I Shout waited, I waited for the right opportunity. It's not like, me and Scram could have put that album out five times by the time we was waiting for this. But we met with Paul and Paul was like, yo, just give me a little bit, I got you. And I was like, yo, this shit is so dope that I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait it out. But I wasn't doing nothing. I recorded a whole nother album. And the last time I was waiting, like two summers ago, I put out Congo. You know what I'm saying? Classic. I did that shit in like two months with Bing, Bing Bong, Bong on and all of that. Yeah. And we already got another album waiting. American Sweetheart is so already you got, done. You got two done? Two. We signed a three album deal. I already got two of them done and I got like two more albums in the stash. That's like some Dave with other Chappelle artists. Shit, I don't right? know if I'm going to drop it with other artists. I might just Fire. keep my deal to myself, be greedy. You know what I'm saying? That goes back to when I set Stay my focused. mind to do something. Don't matter what. It's right. going to happen. You know what I'm saying? And I knew, I really can't see a, a way that this goes bad, this, this deal. It's like, all right, let's say, theoretically, Virgin, Goliath, they do absolutely nothing, right? right? They don't help us whatsoever. I'm confident in my hustle. Yeah, I know what I did can it do. already. Right. Yeah. I'm a, I've been doing this my whole life, yeah. so I know that it's still gonna be successful. Right. Yeah. But I highly doubt that. They're not gonna see, do Rosenberg that. is at the point now. I'm not counting his pockets, but there is, it's no. He's the president of Def Jam. Shady got mad. Audit. He's not pressed for cash. At he's this not point. pressed for money. Or opportunity. Yeah, he's I think at he the just point believes. now, and he said this, where he just wants to do shit that he thinks is dope. You know what shit I'm saying? Shit that he fucks with work. And shout then, out Rosenberg. Absolutely. And shout out Scram Jones too. That's my guy. He Scram is the Scram. one. Scram is the yeah. one who made this happen. I've known Scram since EO Dub. He was he was the DJ at EO Dub when I first started going there when I was like 16. We've been cool since then. I've performed at Rocksteady anniversaries in front of 10,000 people with Scram Jones in. 04, 05. Nah, he's a legend. Scram's a legend. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So we have that history. It's just to the point, I was trying to get with Scram, and I, and there's another thing to young artists. I knew Scram that long. I was trying to, for years, to get a beat from him when he was DJ at Greenhouse, when he was doing, he was super lit. And I was like, yo, is he playing me? Is he like, yo, he's playing me. Like, he's, he's dubbing my shit when I text him, y'all need a beat. But now, after I'm, he's become like, a close friend, I see that it wasn't done on purpose. Nah. He's moving a mile a minute. So right. do I. I move a mile a minute. Don't take it personally. Because me, if somebody leaves me on red or anything, my first thought is, man, fuck them. Word, you know word. Yeah. And, and now you see people just be busy a lot of times. And I do that to people too, and that's not even the intent. It's just yeah. like, yo, I thought I thought I text you back. Or I, was so, I got so many texts at that moment that this shit just fell through the cracks and it's nothing personal. Facts. But Scram had finally hit me right in the beginning of the pandemic, like, yo, let's cook up, finally. And this is right after Ricky and Takeover died, and I, the only song I did was You Know The Vibes. You Know right. The Fucking Vibes. Dang it. The first song I did when I got with him was Drip. That's why in Drip, you hear me say, I'm from Coney Island where my two cousins got hit, so it's forever Takeover and Rick. Somebody's blood got a drip, 10 bands for his head on a stick. After that, I'll get head from his bitch. There's a lot of songs on the album that was written that right song. after they passed away where the kid who did it was still on the run. On the run. He, nobody could find him. You know what I'm saying? So I was in that angry mode. There's always, I don't know if it made the album or we changed the verse or I took the song off. But I'm like, 
I think I took the verse off, but there was one where I was like, y'all hope your mother dies from AIDS. Like, they, it'll never be peace. Like, you know what I'm saying? This kid was still on the run. And there was a lot of anger in me. Right. Um, but then um, the kid, they found him in Rhode Island. He was hiding. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, I, even if I... I even if I did have people looking for him, they wouldn't have found him. Like he was, he He's got arrested on some other shit, whatever the case. But this whole album was written very angrily. That's why it came out and Scram's beats just matched it because his beats are aggressive. super aggressive, yeah, super facts. hard New York City shit. Got his shit. So, so Scram was finally like, yo, you know I, I fuck with Paul, you know what I'm saying? Let's play him the album. And then we finally sat him down and played him the album and then that's when he was like, all right, so what you want to do with this? And I was, he was, I explained what I wanted. We explained the amount of money we were looking for, what kind of support. And he was like, I could do that. And he Fuck, was like, yo, listen, crazy. he said like this though, he kept it real. He said, listen, you don't want to put it out independently because you're not going to get no help. He said, you don't want to put it out on a major because there's a lot of red tape. He said, just give me a little time. Give me like, I think this was like September or something. He was like, yo, give me till November. November came. He was like, give me till January. You were probably like... January came. So in November, when that came and he said, give him to January, I said, yo, I'm dropping the album. And that's when I recorded America's Sweetheart. Yeah. But then I was like, bro, it's Christmas time. Everybody's with family. I'm not going to drop an album. Christmas kiss. Yeah. Chris, the kiss shit. You know that what I'm saying? That shit was crazy. Yeah, so a lot that. of other shit was happening. So I was like, yo, right, let me just hold, hold up. January's going to come. I'm not going to drop a whole album. Then another album. And then, you know, January turned into fucking May. Because yeah, again, during that time, that you were getting other opportunities for the album. Yeah. And I remember yeah, you were like... came to me with, with a, a lucrative offer from another Yeah, we had, we had a, at least like two to three offers during that, while, during that gap. And I remember... Full Rise of the Silverback. Full Rise of the Silverback. And I remember telling him, I was like, yo, this Paul shit, like this label shit takes a long time. And, my, and he's saying this, but it's probably not gonna be this. Like we should just do this. But again, it was like those blinders. And I remember like the third time he was like, this is what Paul said he's gonna do. I believe him. We're gonna fuck with him. That's, that's that loyalty. Wanted. You that's know what I'm saying? That, that's what he wanted. And again, plus, like he- and Plus that patience, look. That I believe that it would happen. I knew it was gonna happen. Like Paul, when I would speak to Paul, he would be like, yo, you know, I appreciate you being patient and all of that. Like, yeah. don't worry, I got it. And, and you know, there's some people I know are bullshitters and there's some people that I take them for their word. And luckily I made the right decision yeah. with Paul. Yeah, and facts. I had the idea for that album cover for over 10 years. Yo, that's crazy. That's crazy. I promise you not, I'm gonna send, <laughs> Ray, I'm gonna send you the picture, you put it up. Years ago, I found this artwork. I don't know where I seen it, but it, it's like a pan, it was like, it's what the album is, but it's, it's newer. The, the album cover is newer because the old the old art that I found, we didn't know who drew it. It was a fucking gorilla with his wife and baby gorilla. You knew they were married? At his feet. Nah, but you know, you figure it. <laughs> He's looking out, fighting like five lions. And I was like, yo, this artwork this is, is fire. fire. That's fire. I'm using this for an album cover. That was 10 years ago. It you might have been more. So you, you like predicted the, the rise from back then. I just then. kept that picture in my phone. Switch phones, kept the picture, switch phones, kept the picture. That's fine. But always come back to it like, that yo, I don't know when deal, the right nigga. time is gonna be. But this album, this 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 cover is gonna is gonna be successful. And then um I did a collab with Extra Large, we did Complex Con. One of the, they're big in Japan. One of their artists is Dragon76 from Japan. An ill muralist, yeah. He's ill with the murals, but his murals are gorillas all over the city. They had him recreate it, and we went back and forth. Nah, it needs to look more like this, look more like this. Instead of the jungle from the original picture, he made it like an apocalyptic Coney Island background. Yeah, fire, that's fire. And um, bro, I had that vision for the album cover over a decade, but it, it, it didn't come to fruition until it was meant to. And that's in the store. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's crazy. the backdrop for the store. Because when we did Complex Con, that was the backdrop. And when Complex Con was over, we was like, yo, what you doing with that? It was like, nothing. He was like, give yeah, me that. Yeah, we taking that. Put yeah, that yeah, in the yeah. store. That's Word. a good Shout out to Extra Large, man. Facts. Getting us out to Complex Con. One thing, another thing I'll say is like, you always do a good job at making the most of every opportunity. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing as someone who ain't have a lot of opportunities when they come, you appreciate them, like you're on time. And then the Complex Con shit in true 
hustler fashion, you spun that into the tops opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Like you met the team Absolutely. from tops, and then you got the, you know, you oh, got. Oh, y'all the, met the McComplex car? Huh? Yeah, oh, that's I, went, fire. I went there to the to the offices and saw the memorabilia. That shit is fire. Yeah, yeah. That's nah. when he started crying. <laughs> so the you first time. That was like a culmination of everything. Like my heart, like seeing him win. Like I just like. Talk his shit. <laughs> Yo, no Wait, matter what I question. do in life, man, we, <laughs> me and everybody around me is going to win. I do Facts. not accept not being successful in life, no matter what I do, man. Fuck that. Me it neither. Don't, it don't matter. But but the difference with me and other people is that I wholeheartedly believe that shit. Like, I, I know inside of me that it's going to happen because I'm I mean, going to make it happen. Facts. Nah, but even more than this, this is just the beginning. Where? This is just the beginning. And mark wait, my wait. words on this camera, bro. Like, yeah. people people might look at this like, oh, Nems made it. I'm looking at it like, nah, I just got my foot in the door. Word. Look at that. Clap it up Word. for that. Clap it up. See, you right. right. A lot of clap. Right. You should you're do right. it tightly how many times I you clap it up. I but when I do say clap it up. Clap that's limit. what I'm saying. That's you're low-key the ringleader. You know what I'm saying? What's your, what's your dap limit? Like when you go out and people are like, yo, what's up, man? They nah, dap you. Nah, one, bro. Nah, it's dap lovers, though. Nah, nah there's mad dap lovers, bro. Nah. There's, there's a few in Coney Island. Like they'll pass Remember by that? my store when I'm in front of the store. They pass by my store like five times and give me a pound every time. Yo, you're a pound lover, bro. Stop pound giving time. me pounds, bro. Right. You got one pound. That's it, bro. Get the fuck out of here. I just want to say, disrespectfully. I'm super proud of you, bro. Yeah, I'm proud and of you. I know too, you don't need that, but that's how I feel. Word. Cop it up for that's that. Clear, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> no, no, no. I think you, you I did think, it. Nah, you hit it on the head. That's 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 hey, right. Hey, right. Yo. Hey, yo. That's crazy. I'm sorry. Yo, rise of the silverback, man. If it ain't out now. It's nah, it's out, out now. August 18th. It's out now. Now look, we got the first song, Ascension, the intro, Angie Martinez. That's legendary. I come. Angie, and right. Angie is the coolest. After I did her show, she gave me her number, and I hit her and was like, yo, Ange, I need you to do this intro to my shit. Give me your cash app, PayPal, whatever. Just let me know what you need. She hit me back and said, yo, Nems, don't ever disrespect me. Ah. Shout, out, shout out, Angie Shout out my fucking cash app. Brooklyn you know Royalty. You know what's funny about the gunplay shit? Yes. Is that both of us redid our verses on that. Who redid it first? Um, Gunplay. Gunplay. He heard yours it. and went back? Nah, when we sent them, he, he, my verse wasn't on it. So when he sent his verse... He was trying to be, because it was me. I feel like everybody on the album put their A game. Facts. Spit. Yo, you got a, you got a, a, a I don't want to say legendary, but it's an amazing Ghostface verse. Like, that's, Ghostface that's is a, vintage. Yo, that's vintage ridiculous. Ghostface. Yes, facts. Yeah, ridiculous. Vintage PD crack verse. Um, gunplay. So he, he tried to be like lyrical on it because he thought I, you know, because I'm on it. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't what we was expecting from him. Word. It's so like, yo, then, I came to you because I wanted this. So then Scram was like, yo, get into your bag. Like, you know what I'm saying? And he sent it back that verse that's on it, killer. And then I put my verse on it after his first verse. So when he redid it, I was like, oh, hell no. He's, he's blowing me out on this track. Oh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I was so like, it was like a secret competition. I got to do my verse yeah, over in the that. same way that he did it. Word. That's ah, the only yeah. you admit that because a lot of yeah, artists yeah. won't admit. Yeah, nah, facts. They you know, absolutely. Do that. They absolutely. Revisiting some yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. PD Crack, we did that shit together in the, in the studio. Word? Yeah, yeah. We wrote, I sh he wrote it in front of me. How I was that? PD comes from hip hop royalty too. You know what I'm saying? Philly. Like, we did it in Philly. You said PD Crack comes from hip hop royalty? Yeah. I'm saying like Rockefeller. Like the Rockefeller yeah, yeah, like the yeah, Rockefeller yeah. camp. Like the features yeah, that yeah, you got there. Yeah. He's been around greatness. Absolutely. Anyway, facts. Absolutely. What was it like being in the studio with Petey? Um, everything that I thought it would be. And Petey is mad genuine and mad cool. And, you know, he was like super humble, showed That's super fire. love, um, got in there, banged it out. When I heard him spitting it in the booth, I was like, because, you know, some, sometimes you do shit with artists, you don't know where their, their mind is at. They might be like, ah, Nems is bullshit. I'm giving him a bullshit verse. Word. Um, or he just wrote it. It might not be what I was expecting. But now nah, he bodied it. Yeah, now nah, let's play a clip Fine. of it real quick. What you stupid or something? Stupid or something? your drink. What you got? Roofy or something? Fuck your life. Walking down the block with the Uzi, I'm stuck. And I'll smack off your motherfucking Kofi. It's nothing. I'm a dirty yeah. dick nigga with my dick in the dirt. Disgusting. And she giving up my pussy, then that bitch getting murked. Fuck out. I'm with diamonds you. on my chain and my wrist is berserk. Yeah, facts. That's fire. Hard body. Fat Joe. The clip play. I don't know if this is going to make it by then, but look, Fat Joe. <laughs> 
um, Scram hit, was like, yo, I got this verse from Fat Joe. Let's make a song out first. I was like, nah, I don't want to do that. Word. I could just do a real song with Fat Joe. Like, I don't want to take his old verses. Word, word. Scram talked me into it. I laid the verse. Um, and then we was trying to get clearance from everybody. And Crack was like, yo, that verse, man, oh, bro, don't ever disrespect it. <laughs> and he was like, send me that. I'll do it over. And uh, he That's said was there. That's fire. That's fire. Fact. You could have got a bunch of features, especially like you're putting this together during the height of Bing Bong. I'm sure yeah, you yeah, were yeah. white hot, but like you got some like unexpected jump. Like to be like, y'all want to do something with PD Crack. I want to get gunplay gun on this. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like, Scram is the nice DJ too. for um, Rick Ross sometimes. And one day yeah. he he came back from tour with, from one of the shows, and I was like, yo, it'll be ill to get gunplay. And he was like, what? I, mean, I remember you put me onto the Bible on the Dash record a while ago. Yeah. Gunplay oh, yeah. been nice. Yeah, fact. Gunplay been nice. Um, also, I noticed that about Gunplay, my bad, is like New York artists, because you're not the only New York artist that I've heard say this, they have like a deep reverence for Gunplay for yeah. some reason. Like uh, New nice. York artists He's that know about nice. him, they really fuck he with him. He spits, Shout out and to we Gunplay. respect that. Ghostface, Ghostface. Classic. He, yeah. It took him a little long, but he was he was like, yo, Nims, I fuck with you. Give me a, I'm doing shit. Give me 30 days. I got you. 100%. And that shit was well worth the wait. That's Uncle fire. Murder, Davies. Um, that's not on the album because. Label shit. Label shit. You know what I'm saying? But it's still out on the single. New York is killing me. They both bodied that. You know what I'm saying? That's like top tier. Uncle Murder verse, top tier. Davies verse. They both bodied it. Sheik Looch. Woo! On Rise of the Silverback. I couldn't have an album called. Rise or anything with Silverback in it and not put Sheik Lucha in it. It just seemed to me Donnie. like right. Scram. I mean, um, Styles gave me the verse on the Bing Bong remix. Um, Jada was like, yo, Nams, I owe you a verse. I know I didn't come through on the Bing Bong remix. I owe you. Um, but I was like, yo, Scram, reach out to Sheik, bro. He got to get on the title track. I can't have anything called Silverback without Sheik on it. He bothered. He said, yo, now, you know, this song's with Biggie. Even got work with Pun. Now I'm with Nems, but this one here's for mm. fun. Bodied it. Damn, Crazy. That's vicious right there. Tish Hyman, the singer, um, she always had a favorite song of mine. It was called That's All That I Can Do. And I was like, yo, Scram, remake this beat. I, I love this song. I listen to it all the time. He remade it, and I sent it to Tish. She's from EO Dub Days. You know what I'm saying? Word? I ain't know yeah, that. Yeah, Tish was See? outside. Now she, then she moved to L.A., and she... Tish Hyman used to be rolling, rolling around yeah, EO Dub. She used to roll with Katana, my homegirl Katana that used to battle rap. So once I sent it to her, she was like, absolutely, I love you, Nims. Like, whatever you need. She sent it, and then she like she bodied it as well. Um, yeah, like so. What's your favorite record on the album? Just um, your, your personal favorite record. Well, I knew like like with Congo, I knew Bing Bong was hitting at the time, so I had to do a song called Bing Bong. Right. Yeah. I knew Don't Ever Disrespect Me was hitting, and that was the, like one of the last songs we did. Yeah. I was like, yo, I gotta make a song uh, uh, with the chorus, Don't Ever Disrespect Me. And I wanted to get Ghostface on the album, so I was like, I don't know if he'll fit on this song, but let's just send it to him. And it just worked out. That shit out. was crazy. That's like, that's a... Purple Rain job. Gorilla On Your Back is a deep cut that I'm not... Right now, when we're recording this, the album's not out. So I don't know how people are gonna respond to that shit, but it comes from like... It means like, you know, people have a monkey on your back, addiction. Yeah. We upped it to gorilla on your back. And that's the verse that I switched out. Because the first verse was like, yo. Super dark. To the kid who killed my cousins. Like, yo, I'm the, you always going to have a gorilla on your back. Because I'm, I'm, I'm coming for you no matter, even if you get out of jail, I'm, it's on. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, It'll yeah. never be over. Um, and I was like, yo, this kid's already locked up. Like, I don't want to, it's already old. Let me switch the first verse to, to addiction and the second verse was already addiction it's a very deep cut i like that shit a lot um there's also one called um whole lap and it's a lot of like voice notes that scram found from the internet and also he had of women like saying crazy shit and yeah. it's like i like that song i just like the way the beat thumps it, I'm, I'm i'm happy with the whole album man i'm, I'm, right. I'm glad that That's it's coming fine. out we're 12 tracks all bangers. Super proud of you. We love you. You know, obviously, you're the host of this show, Nams, but it was great to have you as a guest so we can, you know, celebrate you, ask these questions. Yeah, everybody that... always wants me on their podcast. I hate doing podcasts. It's Word. like, and it's like, why would I do your podcast if my podcast is way more popular than your podcast? We still outside, you, know you heard? Saying? I can make myself my own guest at any time, you know what I'm saying?
needing emergency medical services. Facts. If Naturally evil mind state. Gorilla Nems, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, ah, that shit was I. Right. That shit was I. That shit was I. I was I. not impressed. He was talking mucho mierda. And, uh, yeah. and you chewing gum like. I thought it was going to be fire. Like it's not really a so you need me to run it back. Yeah, run it back. Do it again, bro. Do it again. Jesus Count Christ. You too, uh, I thought that was re- I thought that was really um, You can't talk over the music neither, man. Oh, that's what it really was. He you wanted you didn't feel like they heard the majesty. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. All right. Man. I mean, you're not really a podcaster, so we're gonna put you into the game, Zeke. All right. This all right. is what we do. Yeah. Keep all this part. This is like on the job training right here. Right. All right, all right. let's do it. Count us in, Ray. Ray look mad confused. Count, Ray. Oh, this shit trip. That shit won't stop me from busting your shit. I'll tell you, fuck your life shit. I'm from Coney Island, where my two cousins got hit. So it's forever take over and wake up. Somebody's blood got a drip. Ten bands for his head on a stick. After that, I'll get head from his bitch. Hit that pussy, you trip. To God's ears from my lips. Spent years on some high shit. And now my mama says, drip. I don't know what I know, but murder she wrote. Murder she wrote. They don't got that in Dominican Republic. They don't got that in Dominican Republic, nigga. If you can't get a rough night's sleep. You see how we doing this podcast episode. Coney Soprano in the building. Look at your man. <laughs> Look at your man. Peter dangling. Fucking up his mystique. For the gang. Yeah. For the gang. That's what I'm doing for the That Someone haircut else and that mustache this. already fucked up the mystique. Someone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we outside, yeah. yeah. Comfortable. There like. we go. Just know we parting out here. The waterfall's going, all of that. Out here looking. Fat and marvelous, you heard? <laughs> That's how we doing it. <laughs> ah, yeah. 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 One more time. Yeah, get me back. Yeah. 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 Dale, dale. Ya hora. Hey. Yeah. 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 Vaya, 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 Ever, 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 